So please welcome Patrick Ford. Well, thanks everybody for coming out tonight. Um, <clears throat> uh, and thanks John uh, and Ed and Rebecca for organizing all of this and for inviting people out. Um, I do get tired of talking about myself, so it's nice to talk about somebody else uh, for a change um, in the art world. Um, so this talk, it's funny that uh, John asked how long I'd talk for, I'll talk for. I'm not actually sure how long this will go on for, but I'll call, try and cut it off around 40 minutes and, um, and uh, leave some time for maybe some questions if you have them. Uh, Joan's work is um, the type that is about proliferation and accumulation and mass production. Um, so you can really, uh, it can sort of go off in many, many different directions. And I'm gonna try to tie some of the threads of it together um, tonight. And so I'll focus um, mostly on some themes, some common themes that I see running through multiple different series of her of her drawings. Um, and uh, I just wanted to mention too that um, uh, uh, part of the reason that I came to Buffalo is because of Joan. Um, I moved here to do my, my MFA at UB. <clears throat> she was the graduate chair of my, um, of my committee. And um, she was actually, I think, the first person I met when I came to visit UB when I was considering which program to go to. And um, just one funny story that she might rem remember a little bit differently. Um, but when I met with her in her office the, f the first day I was in Buffalo, um, she sort of, I was talking to her about some of the difficulties and I'd been visiting a few different programs. And she at one point said, um, well, you probably just shouldn't come here <laughs> in the kind of like dry, if you know Joan, is sort of like the kind of dry Joan humor, which I've since like come to know and, and love, but at the time I didn't really know her personality <laughs> and I wasn't exactly sure what she meant by that. Uh, but luckily I came and um, I consider her a friend now. Um, uh, at least one of the projects that I'll talk about today and, and hopefully show you, um, we sort of collaborated on a, a small part of it on a couple drawings. Um, and uh, you probably all know her, but just briefly, um, she grew up sort of inside and outside of New York City, uh, back and forth. She had family that lived um, in Queens, grew up in the suburbs outside, um, and uh, did her MFA at Columbia, and she's now a um, professor in the art department and actually the director of the art department um, at UB. And she's an artist that is sort of clearly constantly being informed by her environments. Oh, and I see she's here. Oh wow, that changes everything. All right, wait, I have to, I have to like go to the third page now. No. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Joan. Uh, <laughs> so um, <laughs> really in, uh, sort of absorbs her environment and filters all of that sort of through her, her own perspective and, and kind of generates this, this series of work and, and the series sort of go off in, in many, many different directions. Um, but I think there are, you know, after looking at a lot of them, there are things that, that sort of tie them together. And so I, I was sort of trying to deal with the impossibility of showing sort of like a breadth of her work. Um, and uh, so I found the best thing to do is just sort of, uh, I'll, I'll sort of talk about different sections of the work. And as I talk about that section, I'll just let a slideshow of that type of work play behind me. I couldn't even decide on one title card, so I had to go with four and just let them play. Um, so uh, the, um, uh, I, I think the, the, the way that I, that I start to think about Joan's work is, um, is, is in terms of, of, of a few different dichotomies uh, or sort of like tensions, thematic tensions that run through. Um, there's the tension between surface and depth, uh, what's represented sort of um, <clears throat> immediately or visibly, um, and then what's sort of buried below that in a historical sense or even physically like beneath the, the layers of skin in the body. Um, there's the idea of sort of the, the original versus the copy or the, or the fake. Um, and then uh, there's the idea of uh, traces and remains, right? What's sort of like left behind after an event, after a, a, a sort of environmental catastrophe, um, after a, a personal intervention of some kind. Um, and also the, the sort of um, the general and the specific. Um, and so the, 
I'll start with um, oops, a slideshow that kind of relates to, I'm gonna start with images that relate to the idea of kind of domesticity, uh, mass production, consumer objects, and junk mail. So you'll see a lot of these things flashing behind me. Hopefully they'll correspond loosely to what I'm actually talking about. Um, so Joan, at one point, uh, uh, when she was living in New York City, was the, um, was the, uh, the collections, the art collections manager, I believe, for, for Philip Morris, um, and which is a strange position, uh, to say the least. But um, when she was in that environment, this sort of like corporate uh, environment, she, she painted a series of photocopiers. And I could only actually find one, <laughs> one of those images. Um, so it's sort of like a little Easter egg. It's hidden somewhere in here. When you, when you uh, see it, you can like shout out or something when it flashes by the screen. But, um, but I think that uh, it was an early series of work. And I think that really sort of informs a lot of the other ideas about um, not only about mass production, but also about um, the sort of aesthetics of the copy um, and what it means to sort of recreate things at the same scale uh, that you experience them. Um, her work deals in a lot of different ways with scale, sort of the impossibility of scale, both in terms of reproduction and in, in terms of historical events and the difficulty of being able to sort of encompass them in any one person's perspective or, um, uh, or understanding. So. Um, the I've I've seen uh, in in some of the things that I've read I've I've seen people describe her her work as as human photocopying or or sort of uh, compare her actual process of um, and eventually we'll get to some junk mail images she's been working for years, I think, on, on a series of, of sort of uh, copies of, of junk mail that she receives. Um, and, uh, and it's interesting because I, I started thinking about that and, and realized that I actually think of her work as sort of like an anti-photocopy in a way, um, or, uh, or an anti, it's sort of like the reverse of mass production. Um, so if objects are, are uh, if the objects that she's dealing with are things that are mass produced, that are printed in mass quantities, um, her work is sort of about taking those mass produced objects and translating them uh, in a reverse uh, way into things that are highly idi idiosyncratic, personal, uh, have a very, uh, you know, where the hand, the movements of the hand are recorded. Um, sadly, you can't see very well in these, um, in some of these images, but if you know Joan's work and you've seen it in person, you know that the mark, the quality of the mark making and the repetitive nature of the mark making is sort of intrinsic to it. Um, so taking these, these, uh, these objects and sort of, um, uh, right, recreating them in a very almost anti-capitalist <laughs> uh, uh, framework, right? So if, if, if most of these things are sort of the products of capitalism, right, um, the things that are either the direct productions of it or the things that are produced to convince us to buy it, um, uh, capitalism wants to remain, like the system itself wants to remain invisible, right? You don't want to see how the sausage is made, how the Nikes are made. Um, you don't want to see the industrial byproducts and the waste that comes off of the, you know, the plastic utensils, uh, the throwaway objects. Um, and so when you take those objects and you render them, uh, you know, at scale with sort of exquisite detail in a very personal hand, uh, it's reversing that process. It's making it, it's making it visible. And in my mind, sort of uh, pushing back then against the capitalist impulse to hide what's going on behind the scenes. Um, uh, another uh, sort of, yeah, some of these are a little bit low resolution because I pulled them offline, but uh, you, can, you can, you get a sense still what's going on here. Um, so the, uh, um, <laughs> Oh right. So, um, so the 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 copy, the fake, and the original. Um, so, there's a sense um, in which kind of every. Um, okay, so here's some of the the junk mail documents, um, and I think these are especially interesting because they they sort of. Uh, they attack this idea and, and interrogate the idea of what an original is and what a, and what a copy is. Um, and so the, uh, there's this idea 
Uh, it's a Deleuzean idea, the philosopher Deleuze, about the, this idea of difference and repetition. And he was uh, sort of set out on this project to, to demonstrate kind of difference in and of itself and repetition in and of itself. So repetition is something that doesn't need to have uh, a, a first in the series. It can just be repetition uh, in and of itself and for itself as an act of creation. Um, and that is something I think is, is, is kind of heavily related uh, to this work and the idea of, uh, of the reproduction, um, you know, money in pre-cut or uncut sheets um, sort of before it's, it's released into the world for circulation, before it kind of has its purpose, and it's more of an aesthetic object. Um, so it changes our, our perspective and the way that we, that we understand it. Um, and I think a lot, of, a lot of Joan's work is based on this idea of um, creating a new framework for understanding uh, familiar objects. Um, that will come up, you'll see. <laughs> sort of again and again. Um, I also always think about the, uh, when I see this work about the, um, money is a good example of it, uh, the, the Borges story um, about Pierre, what is it, the uh, uh, Pierre Menard, author of the Quixote. It's this little story about uh, basically an academic who's obsessed with Don Quixote and he studies him and he wants to sort of experience his life directly and he's obsessed with, with Don Quixote and, and so he, he sort of holds himself up uh, and, and isolates himself in a room and through sort of sheer effort over many months, he basically recreates a chapter of Don Quixote uh, and it's uh, <laughs> literary critics uh, get a hold of it and, um, and they, they consider it this, this brilliant new work of fiction, right? Because it's, um, it's, the, 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 it's the Quixote, but written in a kind of completely different context in a different framework. It's got a different historical uh, background now. Um, and so two works that are exactly the same word for word have, uh, have essentially a different meaning and a different impact on the viewer or the reader. Um, and so these, these kind of objects, uh, I think, fit into that, that framework in interesting ways. Um, so a lot of the things that, you're, that are flashing on the screen, at least some of them are from a series of work um, and from a show that was called The Cost of Living um, that have to do with, uh, um, <laughs> I think at one point when I was talking to Joan, she used the phrase, everything is death, <laughs> right? So it's sort of the death and taxes show, the things that, that you sort of can't escape, the cycles that you become trapped in, whether it's, you know, doing the dishes and the subtle variations in your sink, uh, you know, that, that, that changes a little bit, but never seems to actually go away. So this is like accumulation and continuity um, in the sink. Um, with the, uh, you know, bills, things that you're sent in the mail, Oh, that is a terrible <laughs> image of, that's what the real drawing looks like. That's, <laughs> just kidding. Yeah, there we go. That one's much better. Um, this is actually uh, from a series done at the, uh, at the UB Anatomy Lab, um, the Gross Anatomy Lab, which I think is a, kind of a hilarious and, and wonderful title. Um, so the, um, uh, so you see, right, uh, death, uh, pulling weeds, uh, uh, paying your taxes, uh, getting bills in the mail, the sort of um, idea of the domestic space, the lived space, and its relationship to historical materialism, right? To this idea that history is nothing if not sort of the products um, and the, the material processes that sort of create our, our experience um, uh, of time, really, how we measure time, how we market. Um, and so these, these objects, I think, are, are really located in, in that sense. Um, and then you'll see, I'll get to the, her Love Canal project, the Project Sunshine, um, a little bit later. But um, uh, so much of, um, of, um, of Joan's work is like heavily invested in her immediate environment. And I think with the Love Canal project, um, you start to see a lot of those ideas expand and sort of enlarge themselves. So the idea of being, uh, of sort of like witnessing things uh, over time and, and bearing witness to a process over time. Um, in the domestic space, that sort of gets enlarged historically um, into Love Canal and the idea of envir environmental sort of disaster versus sort of like the environmental, uh, you know, the waste and the garbage and the things that we just put out in our own, in our own spaces. Um, so 
Let me show you then, we've gone through this a couple times, um, but you, you sort of see, and, and I sort of set this slideshow up as a little kind of pun on this as well, but um, the idea of recurring cycles um, and uh, the sort of life being broken down into a series of rep repetitive events um, and the forces that are there that sort of, uh, you know, in, ensure that we continue through those same cycles. Um, so let me move on to the next slideshow, which is, this one's a sort of shorter one. Um, so this is a little bit out of sequence. Um, Joan did a, uh, a, a, a large series, a large body of work that's, um, that are either vastly enlarged drawings of weeds, um, or some of them are, I, th I believe a lot of them are life-size drawings of trees, uh, you know, 10, 15 foot <laughs> tall drawings of, of trees. Um, and I'm just, I won't talk about this very much, but I'm really interested in the idea of weeds, especially in relationship, trying to draw a thread here, but in relationship to the, like the junk mail <laughs> and those reproductions. Um, so I, there, it seems like there's a way that um, you could see uh, weeds, trees, and flowers as also being mass-produced objects, <laughs> things that are mass-produced by nature. Um, flowers are sort of like the flashy advertisements of the natural world, right? The thing that <laughs> draws the pollinators in, and, uh, and then uh, weeds. <laughs> Weeds are like the junk mail, right? Uh, the thing that pops up everywhere, whether or not you want it, uh, and sort of the, is an endless supply of it. Um, and you know, whereas junk mail kind of keeps the postal service running, you know, weeds kind of keep like you know Monsanto running, and they get to sell us the the chemicals that kill the weeds that are resistant to chemicals because of all the ones that they spray on the crops. And um, but uh, so. Um, so, uh, oh, so I mentioned the idea of, right, how the work is always changing our, our perspective. And so one of the ways that that happens, I think, in the weed drawings um, is that uh, weeds, the way that we normally think about them are, are, are only weeds in that category because of a, a sort of like anthropocentric perspective, right? Weeds are, um, are the plants that we don't want, that we consider invasive or a nuisance or a problem or aesthetically unappealing. Uh, and so they, uh, they only take on that category and that idea of nuisance when you think about it from a human perspective. And so by taking these things that essentially nobody wants and that we you know, spend all of our time kind of removing from the environment and uh, sort of th throwing them back in our face at this greatly enlarged scale and in this sort of beautifully rendered uh, uh, you know, uh, style, um, it, it, it forces you in a way outside of that human perspective, or at least that's the way that I think about it when I see them, that I, I'm seeing them not from uh, the perspective of, uh, of sort of like a person that has to deal with them as a problem, but a person that's presented with them as a sort of gift um, uh, or as, a, as an opportunity, right, to, to think about um, the larger narratives that they're associated with. Um, so the, right, so the, the system of nature is not the same as the system of, uh, of, of humans, right? Uh, aesthetics uh, doesn't apply, desire doesn't apply, um, it's not limited by those notions, and, um, and this, this work is kind of, um, I think, drawing a lot of those, of those themes together. Um, uh, oh, and I should mention also because I just learned about this from Joan and because I mentioned it in the Facebook post, so I, truth in advertising. Um, uh, so I know that uh, I don't have images of it, but, um, but Joan's working on um, a series of these large plant drawings for Roswell Park for the, the Cancer Institute, and she focused on um, sort of uh, uh, natural uh, cancer treatments, so um, things like um, uh, let's see, I have a list here. Uh, passionflower, echinacea, oregano, and sort of, um, again, giving um, the, so the, the patients um, at the hospital sort of something to focus on other than the, you know, kind of more medical and, and drug-based treatments that they're going through, um, sort of filling the environment with, a, again, a different perspective on, on their own uh, situation, which I think is, a, is a, another, again, a beautiful way to, to think about that process. Um, okay, move on from weeds 
and to Project Sunshine. Let this load for a second. Okay. So, um, uh, I think this might be the project that I'm the most fascinated with um, of Jones. And um, it's related to, it started with a uh, consideration of, of Love Canal and it's since kind of spread to cover a lot of the different, um, uh, uh, I guess, toxic, uh, thinking about Don DeLille, it's, it's toxic anomalies, the, like uh, the, the, the toxic events that have um, uh, ha happened in, uh, the upstate New York area, Niagara Falls area. Also, I know she's interested in sort of the water crisis that's going on in Michigan. Um, so it's sort of, it's spread beyond Love Canal to incorporate, incorporate a lot of, uh, of other sort of environmental disasters. Um, and the, but it originated with a, a sort of um, a, a, a project that was investigating Love Canal and I'm sure everybody in the room is familiar with Love Canal, but just briefly. Yeah, I mean, yeah. If you're not, you could raise your hand. I mean, yeah, I think everybody is, but so I don't have to go into that. Okay. <laughs> um, so uh, Joan's uh, uh, interest in Love Canal took her to to the site, um, and uh, you can see those first few drawings that we're playing through. Um, it started with a a kind of consideration of the direct environment um, and these sort of long, meandering, continuous renderings of the fence line uh, that now surrounds the 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 site which is um, you know which is supposedly contained um, there's questions about how well and how permanently uh, it's contained and what containment even means in in the sense um, but this uh, this is the the project I think that deals the most explicitly with this idea of sort of surface versus depth right what is sort of recorded and visible um, versus what is uh, hidden and concealed and the, her whole exploration of this deals with um, the processes that you have to go through to get below the surface right whether it's uh, actually physically um, you know uh, the, the teams that would actually have to physically go uh, underneath and, and do sampling um, to test for toxicity, or if it's the sort of intellectual task of, uh, of going into the archives at UB and digging through all the historical documents to gain a greater um, sort of understanding of it. Um, uh, and I think it, it, it sort of speaks a lot to the idea of the nature of kind of catastrophes in the 20th and 21st century, because I think a lot of them are, um, you could describe as sort of invisible or hidden catastrophes. Um, thing, things uh, that have happened wherein the scale is so large and the complexity so great that it can't be contained by any single perspective. Uh, it can't be sort of understood uh, by any one person or uh, even a sort of like network of people. Um, and so it exists in these, these remnants, these remains, the things that are left behind, the traces in the ground, the, the documents, the evidence of, uh, you know, the dumping both legal and illegal, the projects behind it, the testing that went into it. Um, and uh, I think some people have even, some sort of scholars have even described like the, anthrop the Anthropocene, right, the, the sort of like period that we're in now, which is defined by the human uh, kind of uh, intervention in the, the earth, the environment, and human systems, um, uh, that you can sort of define that as being the time period where uh, our effect on the earth has become like sort of too large and complex to be accurately measured. So not just that it's difficult, but that it's sort of like in an epistemological way impossible to do. It sort of like can't be contained within the idea of knowledge. And I think this project uh, as a whole is, is, it feels to me like a way of kind of pushing back against that, of trying, you know, maybe in a, in a, in a impossible way, but, but sort of trying desperately to grasp back at that, to sort of take back that knowledge and make it presentable. Um, I think Joan at one point described uh, the process of drawing these documents, which record, I mean, I won't even go into it, but talk to Joan about it sometime, uh, the, the, just the horrific, uh, you know, not just the dumping and the sort of disregard for the environment, but, you know, testing uh, radioactive isotopes on prisoners and, uh, I mean, all kinds of, of, you know, things that you really couldn't imagine. Children, in fact, I remember having a specific 
discussion about that. Uh, children, uh, yeah, being tested with like strontium. Uh, anyway, um, so the um, uh, yeah the, the the problems and the the kind of um, uh, the traumas. Uh, of the past. And so uh, I mentioned before the idea of like repetition being um, a kind of creation. Um, and I think this also demonstrates repetition as a form of, of destruction also. So um, uh, repetition of, you know, environmental disasters, a repetition of the idea of taking our secrets, our traumas, our things that we don't want to deal with, uh, the, the literally the physical runoff of our, right, all of the sort of industries that allowed the, you know, the burgeoning kind of uh, consumerist culture of the 50s uh, to take shape, um, sort of burying those underground. Um, so that kind of repetition of taking the things you don't want to deal with and forcing them, uh, burying them sort of uh, in, the, in the landscape or or in our psyches, whatever the case may be. Um, so, um, yeah, part of, um, well, and so, actually, I'm glad that just popped up. So this idea of scale, again, I know we've cycled around one time, but, um, and so I mentioned the idea, right, that the, the impossibility of sort of holding the entire thing in your head. And so you can see this, this, uh, I mean, I would just call it a drawing, not, not even a series of drawings, sort of one continuous drawing done in these, uh, these accordion style uh, uh, notebooks, which record, uh, I, I believe, the entire fence line all the way around the, um, the, uh, the Love Canal site. Um, and so, again, this is, this is sort of, it's dealing with the difficulty or the impossibility of containing all of it at once. And also with the environment in general, right? How the environment um, <laughs> sort of no matter how much it gets abused, that it sort of pushes back. And if, you, if you've been to the Love Canal site, you, you see sort of the remains of the neighborhoods that were, uh, that were you know, removed uh, because they were you know, contaminated by the, by the waste there. And how there are sort of bits and pieces, there are there's sort of uh, uh, fragments and, and remainders of them, but they've been sort of reclaimed by the environment, by the, the vines and the weeds and the, the overgrown grass. And, um, and that there's a sort of yeah, this sort of push and pull that happens physically in the environment and that happens, I think, sort of historically and within the narratives that we tell about, you know, about our relationship to the environment. Um, oh, so, right, so the idea of, of, of evidence um, and um, uh, so, so many of these, of these images are, are about evidence and uh, so whether that's evidence of, of uh, crimes that were committed, um, uh, you know, sort of environmental crimes, uh, of, um, you know, of history, of time passing, even if you go back to those, the, the drawings of the, of the sinks, uh, right, the kitchen sinks, how, you know, she was recording, you couldn't see because of the, uh, of the terrible um, kind of... Uh, um, pixelation of the images, but um, but they were recordings. I think each one is over a week's time, um, and you can see uh, at the base there are there are dates um, and times that each drawing was made. Um, so it's right. It's it's a historical accumulation on the personal and domestic level versus something like this, which is a, a an accumulation um, on the historical. Um, on the historical level. So change of scale, whether it's right, like blowing something up and making it physically larger or a historical scale or the scale of sort of like witnessing things. Um, there's definitely a, a relationship between the two. Um, yeah, and I, and I, I do think that, um, uh, you know, I mentioned the idea of these traces of things, radioactivity as a as a trace, right? Or the ink, the, the drops of ink that sort of mark it as an as an original handmade object. Um, uh, that those things are always kind of front and center um, in in Joan's work, um, and they sort of. Yeah, they sort of ask what, what it means to, to bear witness to something, right? To look closely, to examine an object, um, to uh, sort of see it in a perspective um, that um, is different from, from the one that we sort of habitually um, are, are used to. Um, and, and also the ways that, um, if I can actually maybe skip back to these 
these drawings, right? So, um, because they're, they're really, uh, so much of the work is, um, is sort of, uh, connected to the idea that there are of how we demarcate space, like what is the public and what is the private. Um, and throughout these images, you see um, uh, not only the clear demarcation, right, the fence line and the, you know, the razor wire and what all of that implies, um, but also these, these sort of like the markings, right, the little signs, uh, the no pre trespassing signs alongside if I can find one quickly, alongside, you know, sort of like official um, city signs that mark streets that are there for, right, for our, um, for our use alongside, if I can find another one. Maybe I didn't put it in here, but uh, alongside advertisements and billboards, right? So all of the things that, that are sort of there as visual markings of the environment, um, which are kind of either welcoming or exclusionary or sometimes both at the same time um and uh i didn't you know i i feel like i disappointed john i didn't put any images from the pink uh drawing in here um just because i, I was getting overwhelmed with the number of images that i was including uh but you could think of those right those um those uh sort of immersive uh those immersive drawings that deal with in interior environments as sort of this, the same thing, right? So uh, a local bar, the anatomy lab, um, a lot of uh, the the recent drawings that, that Joan's been doing in, in, in her sketchbooks are, you know, have to do with <laughs> the the spaces of, of, of bureaucracy that happen in the school, right? The the endless sort of meetings and, uh, and, uh, um, and, uh, you know, talks and, 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 you know, visiting lecturers and things that, that, that make up the space, uh, the academic space. Um, and so the, right, so the landscape being both marked and marred with these kind of coded messages uh, and symbols and uh, practices and cycles. Um, Let me skip ahead a little bit here. Um, I wanted to just show you, because sort of the third part. So if the first, the first part of the of the sort of Love Canal project was um, the fence line, right? The thing that sort of literally is the 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 remainder. If if the fence wasn't there, you would think that it's just sort of like this grassy knoll. It's kind of like if anybody's seen it, it's just sort of like this strange kind of bubble of grass <laughs> that's been left there and it's actually kind of pretty it looks like a it looks sort of like a an elevated park that you could go sledding from any angle or something like that um and so the the fence line is the thing that that records the, the danger that's there right like the the concealed danger below the um below the surface um and so uh, i wanted to point out the sort of third stage you know because again the, the documents the photocopies right are also recording the danger right that's that that was sort of buried below all these sort of official government reports and documents um and then the the sort of third stage were these giant and you can get a sense of the scale of them uh here so these two eight by eight foot um, um, drawings that one one of which is of the the ground in the Love Canal site and one is the ground uh, in Joan's backyard so again bringing it back to this idea of things that are essentially copies of each other or that are very very um, similar but um, but that the, the subtle differences, the, the sort of like intrinsic differences um, uh, make, they sort of make all the difference conceptually, right? Um, between the domestic space uh, of the backyard and the kind of toxic uh, uh, um, historical space of this environmental disaster, uh, but um, right, as drawings, uh, the drawings bring out the 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 kind of um, not only the nuances and the subtleties of of the uh, the detail, which you can see here, the sort of beautiful and sort of exquisite detail of the uh, of all the pebbles and the and the the flora, um, but also kind of right marks how hidden um, the the histories can be that are sort of underneath the surface. 
Um, and I'll, <laughs> I won't bore you with, I have all these notes about like Derrida and the archive and I won't, <laughs> I won't go into that. But um, uh, uh, suffice to say, I, I kept thinking about this uh, because of course, you know, of, of Joan sort of digging through the archives at UB and pulling all of this information uh, and these aesthetic objects um, out of it um, or taking out these documents and turning them into aesthetic objects um, about the, the, just the nature of the earth as an archive itself. Uh, the earth is something that that uh, has a, a record um, uh, that's at a, again a different time scale than the human time scale, um, and that it, that these drawings um, feel to me like a way of of taking account of that, of sort of like bearing witness to that, um, that different time scale, that it contains history, it contains events, it contains traumas, uh, it contains, you know, the buried bodies, uh, the, uh, the buried waste, uh, the things that, um, that we don't want to confront directly, but keep returning, keep sort of uh, emerging in different ways, physically seeping up like in Love Canal, uh, or uh, or sort of returning in a historical sense, um, but things that can't can't sort of be expunged from from the record. Um, and I wanted to uh, let's see, yeah, I think I have time to show you. Um, I also wanted to show you just this because this is the project I mentioned earlier that that we actually worked on together. Um, this one but so this is uh this is not the love canal site but this is actually um a uh oh these were some uh snails that, that had rained and there were all these snails out and i just remember thinking these might actually be radioactive snails um so uh but this is actually a uh, a spoils site um in niagara falls um that had i think the 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 actual um waste had recently been moved um it should be pausing now Okay, um, and so um, th this is sort of a, a again, it's it's a new form uh, for the work, or at least fairly new um, in relation to the other things that, that I've shown you. But um, one that I think is is translating a lot of the ideas um, in, in really fascinating ways. So um, so these are, are are rubbings, sort of large scale, and I think I have a picture of them up on the wall eventually. But um, large scale. Um, uh, rubbings of the actual surface of, of the asphalt. So, um, oh, there's the, that's the image, that's, those are the, the pieces finally installed on the wall. Um, and, uh, you know, not to belabor it, but right, this, um, this uh, again, the relationship between surface and depth, right? Um, and also uh, going into these basically contaminated sites um, and doing rubbings that themselves are being irradiated by the waste. And so you have these, a physical object that's not just a sort of copy or a representation, but is actually um, sort of infected or imbued with the trauma that is being recorded by the, by the project itself. Um, and just a, another little anecdote, when we were walking around, um, uh, Joan actually has like a, like a little Geiger counter, like a handheld Geiger counter. And so we were up in Niagara Falls, just walking around in what was it like a best western uh parking lot and there's like a bowling alley next door and a church and just walk around and and she gave me the geiger counter and said just just hold this and just watch just watch when we walk around and so the it, it measures uh radiation in microsieverts and and apparently the the normal kind of background uh radiation just that the earth generates itself and you know from the things around us is somewhere between like eight and twelve microsieverts and um, as we're walking around it's you know saying 8 12 10 then it jumps up to 15 20 30 50 uh, it starts beeping there's actually a little like beep telling you that that there are high levels and just just walking around in in parking lots uh, public parking lots in Niagara Falls I think we we saw readings upwards of like 150 so like more than 10 times uh, the normal background radiation um, just coming up from the parking lot because of course again the 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 traumatic nature of the contamination is not just that it was and and, and also right that I mentioned the idea of like 
the, the problematic term containment because the the waste in some lo in some ways contained now but of course for years it was seeping out into surrounding you know into the water tables into the soil in the area and then construction companies would come and dig it up and use it as fill for paving parking lots and things like that so now this um, these traces these remnants these these radioactive isotopes that the record of kind of the I don't know you could call it the sins of industrial you know, production um, are now spread all over the city um, and, and kind of, you know, uh, uh, are there to be recorded. And so, so these, these drawings, these, these rubbings that are taken directly from, from the ground, um, I think of as being kind of, uh, um, yeah, like a, a sort of um, uh, images, but also physical objects that, that are recording um, that history. Um, and so I'll just show you very quickly because just because I, you know, I was I went and met with Joan, and she showed me um, some of the <laughs> notebooks, and I I'm pretty sure I got permission to show these. Yeah, I got permission to show these. <laughs> um, and so just some some she's been carrying these notebooks around, and I wish I could show you uh, tons of them because they're they're actually really amazing. She's got maybe like eight or ten notebooks that she's just filled with these ink and watercolor drawings that are that are just she carries them around, and they're again a record of of her environment, um, and uh, along with text that sort of uh, you know relates to. So you got a lot of this sort of like academic speak, or this it's not even it's like bureaucratic speak about you know inclusive excellence. I love this, the part that click to concur or click concur. Um, uh, and so, uh, yeah, re recording basically, ag again, her environment. Maybe you could also call this a traumatic environment or a tra <laughs> traumatic, the traumatic bureaucracy of academia. Um, but uh, it's, it, it, yeah, it becomes a record of, 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 of the places that she goes of, again, these sort of like repetitive cycles, the, um, the lessons, um, uh, that her kids go to, the meals, the restaurants, the meetings. Um, and I mean, you could just, uh, we could spend a whole hour just doing like a close reading of this one, um, of this one, uh, you know, there are a lot of air, like airplane uh, cockpits, or not cockpits, uh, fuse, uh, what do you call it? The cabin, air, airplane cabins. Um, and I don't, know if you, I don't know if you can actually read that, but the, the, the little notes are substituting Oh, sorry, submitting to judgment, um, performance evaluation, um, uh, right? So the, and then sort of that <laughs> surrounded by, of course, all the things, all the sort of like visual culture of the inside of an airplane, which is there to like make you feel calm and safe and secure. Um, so the, right, the, the charts that, that kind of protect you from things, even though in a plane all you can do is think about all the things that you should be doing once you, or the things that you're going to be doing once you're off the plane. Um, all right, safe, does that say safe and secure? Safe and secure, right. Um, oh, that's her, <laughs> her little mini uh, watercolor kit. This is from like a fish printing, what is that called? Sumophote? So something like that, fish printing, um, uh, and and uh, so I, I'm just I, I really I think this work is really is is really beautiful and also um, uh, again relates to the idea of cycles of the the lived experience as as drawing is not just a recording but actually like a a, a, um, a continuous kind of unfolding of lived experience um, it's something i'm trying to get my students to understand about it all the time and the reason why they ha like have to carry a sketchbook with them um, all the time <clears throat> but uh um i think that's i think that's all